If you want to reach your goals this year and crush it, there are four skills and qualities that you're going to need in your toolbox of personal development this year or for that matter at any time. Whether you want to build a relationship, a loving, fun relationship with a significant other, or perhaps you want to take a few pounds off and manage your weight and your health, or perhaps you want to build your business, enhance your sales, or increase your performance, regardless of what your goals may be, these skills are vitally important and I find in nearly 50 years of doing this work in this space they're necessary. So let me just give you a quick overview and then we'll go deeper into it. I usually have four days in the Silver Method Immersion Experience to really build this out. So the four skills are number one it is essential necessary I think that you can stay calm and focused, responsive to life, no matter what, that you leverage your personal energy. Number two, it is also, I believe, necessary that you know what you want and you can stay focused on your goals. And even more importantly, that these goals, these aspirations, what it is you think you want, are in alignment with your values. Number three, it is essential that what? You can guess. Confidence. We all need confidence in two ways. The confidence that we can do it based on real evidence from your past where you know what you know because you've been through similar experiences. Or at least the confidence that somehow, some way, with more training, more research, more study, you can figure it out. And number three, or excuse me, number four, <laughs> number four, possibly the most important and most unique, it is vitally essential that you have awakened your intuition and that you can distinguish between intuition that you can trust, you can count, and when it's just wishfully thinking or fear, and that you have a high level of skill, and it is a skill. So let's take a look and let me go a little bit more deeply into this with you. Again, what is it that you want? What are some of your goals? What are some of your aspirations? And think about how you move through life. The first one I said is to leverage your personal energy, to be able to stay calm and focused, centered and balanced in spite of it all. I'm sure you can see this, the value, and understand, because let's face it, have you not noticed? If you're stressed, overwhelmed, feeling preoccupied, worried, you're not at your best. You're more likely to make mistakes. You're more likely to prematurely burn out. You're more likely to get demotivated and give up. Yes, I know we've all been there and done that. You're not alone. It's common. Another aspect of this is things are moving so fast things are changing so fast that there is a high level of uncertainty that we're all experiencing. Whether it be in our finances, our business, our relationships, our, the politics of our nations, <laughs> our states, our economy, the, the social scene, things are moving. So it's not just technology that's changing so rapidly. Things are moving at such a pace that they're, we're all experiencing a very high level of uncertainty. And it is necessary that we are what? Adaptable and flexible so that, yes, we know what we want and we're going to need to what? Make shifts, change direction, and implement something new, a new strategy, make sometimes subtle changes, sometimes dramatic. Flexibility has become so necessary in today's world. The flexibility to adapt and to move with the flow, to, to change when necessary, to shift gears. And the only way that's going to happen, if you cannot manage your energy and you're reactive, not just you, me, I'm, I'm talking, you know, I, I'm in this too, in this space. Even though I've been doing this work for nearly 50 years, I find that if we, when we can stay centered and balanced and focused on what it is we want, then we tolerate more, we navigate things more confidently, and we move through life 
more confidently. So the danger is if we're reactive, if we're stressed, if we're upset, if we're getting angry, if we're feeling all sorts of negative emotions and animosity and resentment for various reasons, and frankly, there might even be just reason to feel that. But I have to say, it gets us nowhere. Just like worry. Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives us something to do, right? But we get nowhere with it. We're just you know, moving back and forth. <laughs> And that's what happens. Anger just makes more anger. So yes, more importantly, do something about it. Let that upset fuel you. Let that upset push you through. Because if we get upset and we go into anger, the brain takes over and we go into what some would call primitive mode and we become reactive and we're not thinking clearly and we block, inhibit the frontal lobes, the higher thinking functions of the brain and we can feel despair and despondent, and we give up more easily. So what are some of the things you can do to stay centered, to stay balanced, to maintain that biologically and psychologically homeostasis, which means we're in balance? Well, there are a number of things to do, and you know some of these things, you, you know. However, just because you know it doesn't mean you're doing it. So I'm hoping, I want to help you with this, that I can inspire you, motivate you to take action. So walking. Personally, I'm a walker. I walk every day at least 30 minutes, sometimes briskly, sometimes just a gentle walk. Any kind of physical activity, dancing, moving, Tai Chi, helps. It's good, it's healthy for the body and healthy for the mind, and it helps us to stay centered and balanced. It's a natural antidote to releasing stress getting proper rest, not getting three, four, five, even six hours. All the research shows we need seven to nine hours of sleep. I know that sounds like a lot, but I, I'm sorry. The research is there for over 50 years about that. Meditation, relaxation techniques, therapeutic massage, yoga. These are all skills that are necessary. Personally, I'm a, I've been a practitioner of dynamic meditation that I learned in the Silver Method back in 1971. It's become part of my daily routine in the morning, in the evening, during the day. And here's a little tip for you. And I'm not talking about a spiritual practice, although for you that might be so. Just a simple act. You know, there's so much research. When I started in 71, people meditate, oh, you're meditating, you know, people don't know what to think. Now it's become more commonplace because there's so much research, so much evidence about the benefits for your health, for your brain, for your longevity, to think more clearly. So all you need to do is basically eyelids closed in a comfortable, quiet place where you're not going to be distracted. Turn off your phone and allow several, three slow, deep breaths. And if you do that even for 12 to 15 minutes, it'll do the trick. It doesn't have to be an hour or so. And during the day, I highly recommend, I want you to, and it, you can report back to me before you go from one meeting to another meeting, from one task to another task, from one event to another event, from one subject to another that you're studying. Pause. Eyelids closed. A few slow deep breaths. Release any of the tension. Just desire to release and focus on your attention. What is it that you, that you want? Why are you doing what you're doing? You do that, you'll get more done in less time. Guaranteed. No question about it. And it's not just my opinion that's based on working with a couple hundred thousand people for nearly 50 years all over the world. Literally, the research is there, the science is there. So just now listen, when this video is over, stay to the end. Just start doing this. It could be 30 seconds to a minute, two, three minutes. It doesn't have to be a long, big, you know, Megillah. Something as simple. Some people call them transition meditations. When you do that, you'll find you'll think more clearly, you'll have more energy, and you'll be more responsive and navigate more in a flow rather than reactionary, which wears us out prematurely. We could spend the whole, excuse me, we could spend the whole day on just this one alone. Number two, you got to know what you want. I hear this from people, from my clients that I mentor, from my students. Ken. I have all these skills, I have all these tools, I know what to do, but I don't know what I want. <laughs> so it's important that you are clarify, that you get clarity about what it is you really want. 
and that what it is you want is consistent in alignment with your values. Because if they're not, you become, there'll be dissonance, what's called cognitive dissonance. You got to be congruent. And when you are, you're more motivated. It's one of the primary reasons why people do not reach their goals or give up prematurely because they don't have that big why behind them. They're not clear about their life vision. They're not clear about why they want what they want. So the exercise that you can do very simply on your own, again, when this is over, is to sit down, eyelids closed, a few slow deep breaths, just to quiet yourself and ask yourself, what do I really want? What's important? And ask, why do I want it? How will this benefit me and my life or those I care about? In other words, look at Simon Sinek would say your big why. That mission. Have a sense of mission. I would say that in, in, I've been doing this work. I'm now in my 48th year to be exact. What fuels me and helps me to tolerate all the inconsistencies, the challenges, the difficulties, the struggles that we all face in life is being locked in to the vision, the sense of purpose and mission. And the mission that I subscribe to that was embedded within me by Dr. Jose Silva way back when I first met him and worked with him or was mentored by him and doing my working out with the Silva Method is, well, I'm interested in helping people move through life more easily, to help people stay calm and focused and healthy in spite of it all, to empower people with the skills and tools to help them evolve, to bring out their best self in all they do. And if each of us take responsibility for ourselves and get improved like that, just do the math. It starts with you, it starts with me, and it, then our family, our community, our state, our nation, and then ultimately the globe. And we need a lot of people like you doing this. The world needs a lot of help today. And yes, we've made a lot of progress. So be clear about your intention. And number three, confidence. So I'm not talking about the affirmation, that, yes, I'm confident, I can do it. And people mean well and encourage us. And we hear all those sayings and the cute quotes. Fantastic. However, there's nothing like the most powerful kind of confidence that will help you to navigate life and sustain all the challenges and tolerate those challenges. It's a kind of confidence that becomes a resource state where you can look back in your life and say, I've been there and done that. I have been in similar challenges. And you think of specifics that are similar to what I'm facing today. And you know, it wasn't so bad. I got through it. And not only did I get through it, but I learned a lot along the way and got even better. So it's evidence. It's not just you wishing and hoping. It's evidence to support your conviction. So I want you as an exercise to start reliving and reviewing and not just recalling, but get into a state where you're there as if you're there in that moment of excellence at that time when you're at your best, when you succeeded. And when you create that state of being, then do your creative visualization, your mental rehearsal of your new goals. And start your day that way, reviewing successes and feeling deep gratitude and appreciation. And you'll definitely move through the day with more confidence, more certainty. You'll think more clearly. You'll have more ideas and more inspiration. The other kind of confidence is similar with the evidence, but the kind of confidence that says, you know, I don't know how the heck I'm going to get there. This is got to have your life vision, right? That mission, that grand goal, and not all goals. You know, people tell you, you got to think big and, you know, b big enough. Okay, that's great. Well, maybe I'm just an average guy. In fact, I'd like to brand myself as the personal development man for, for the average person. And I don't mean average in the sense of not, but, you know, we don't all have to have multi million dollar businesses, we don't all have to have this grand vision. Although helping the world and helping humanity, I think, is one of the grandest visions. Set goals for yourself, and as you reach even a little bit of progress, express your gratitude, appreciation. And it reminds you, I'm getting better and better. It reminds you that you're making progress. And it supports your conviction that somehow, some way, I'll figure this out. That's an important level of confidence, isn't it? And leading up to that, talking about confidence, number four, I want you to develop, and I will call it a skill, to cultivate your creative expression, 
your intuition, which in my experience, come from the same place. Intuition. It's not just those intuitive consultants we all read about and admire say, whoa, man, she amazing, he amazing, and they charge five hundred dollars, you know, for a one hour or ninety minute session with them. And I'm not knocking it. What I am saying though is you are as intuitive, you are as psychic as anyone else. You name it. You may not be as developed, you may not be as skilled. Why? Because you're not as practiced, you're not as disciplined. And if you would make a little bit of time a day and start journaling your experiences with trusting your gut, with your intuition, with this wisdom from your heart, and start paying attention to the distinctions between, and this is your, your, your challenge here that I'm challenging with, and you pay attention to when you're on the money, yay, and when you are off, because it's a slippery slope, intuition, it really is. Often we talk part of the language of the mind, of the intuitive mind, of what we call the subjective mode of consciousness, is when you're feeling inspired, like, yes, moving this direction. The challenge is, and the danger is, you might feel inspired, you might feel good, because it's familiar territory, and you've been there, done that. And it's one of the reasons why people perpetuate the same old pattern and don't really make any changes. And they go to all the seminars and read all the books, but they don't make any changes because they're still stuck in the same old patterns. So be careful. It's a skill set, and it needs to be developed, and you can by like I said, a simple way now is to stop paying attention to when you're on, when you're off, and was it a feeling, was it a thought, was it a visual experience? Pay attention to it. Practice with it. Exercise. Take more training. Read a book. I hope one day you'll join me in the Silver Method Immersion in Chicago, Connecticut, or wherever I am in the world traveling. It's a phenomenal class. I love it. I'm so honored and privileged that I found it so early in my life, way back, and I'd love to I'd be honored to have you in class with me. However, regardless of whether you do silver or something else, whatever's a fit for you, this is an important skill set. It will help you make more winning decisions. It will help you avoid danger. It will help you to be more and more in flow, in the right place at the right time, where it seems like the universe has got your back. So you're going to cultivate and develop. That's why, by the way, as an example, one way you can build confidence that's so important is in the silver immersion, we call them points of reference. And all that means, that just an expression we use, is that you have evidence, you have experience. So throughout the four days, especially in day three and day four, we go from nine in the morning to seven at night. They're long days, but people walk out feeling better, by the way. Is we do all sorts of games with intuition. And I will call them games. But the kind of game where people say, really? I think Ken's just, you know, being polite and trying to make me feel good. And then you do it, and you go, oh my God, really? And not just once, lucky guess, but again, and again, and again, and again. And you go, whoa, if I can do that, that's the kind of confidence that comes with your intuition and how you trust it, because you have had direct experience. And the more you have, and it's not just in the training, the more in your daily applications that you have experience like that, the more confident you are, and the clearer it will be to you those distinctions of when this is reliable, accurate, inner wisdom, heartfelt intuition, and when it's biased, a distortion, or not. So, let's just recap those four skills that I want you to develop in your life to help you crush it this year or any time and reach your goals is number one, whatever it takes to learn how to have as a daily practice the skill of staying calm and focused and balanced, no matter what, in spite of it all, even under pressure. Take daily walks, do some sort of activity, dancing, Tai Chi, make meditation part of your daily practice, even for just a few minutes a day. Get proper sleep. Two, know what it is you want, be clear about what you want, and make sure they're in alignment, your goals, your aspirations, with your values, what's important to you. And one way to do that is ask yourself, what is it that I want? Why do I want it? How will this benefit me and those I care about? So you work in your vision, the big picture. And then number four, cultivate as a skill set your creativity, your intuition. Learn to make the distinctions between logic, reasoning, rational thinking, 
an intuition that goes beyond that. Go to the dictionary. Look up a, a, a definition of intuition. And it basically says something effective, an ability to somehow, some way, get information that goes beyond the rational process. And it's hard to describe sometimes. That's why it takes lots of practice with that. So I hope you find this helpful. And I know you will when you apply it. I appreciate you taking your precious time to follow through to the end with this. And if you're enjoying this, you're finding this of value, you're resonating with me, please visit my website, Silva Method of Connecticut. That's Silva, S-I-L-V-A, method, C-T, dot com. And go to the, I have a great blog page with all sorts of video training. There's all sorts of information, detailed information, and check it out. See if it's a fit for you. And I hope one day to shake your hand and that you'll grace me with your presence. Second, please do me a solid. If you're resonating with this, you're finding it a value, are there people in your life whom you know could benefit? Please share this, however it is, you know, the share, the share link, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It could be a game changer for yourself, for your friends, and it helps me get my message out, and it helps me to find people who will benefit from what I have to offer. So thanks so much. My name is Ken Kasher. I serve as the Silva International Training Director, which means I certify, develop our instructor team. I'm also their senior instructor, now going into my 48th year. Thanks again, guys.